Ai Weiwei, you've been vocal in your support for the Palestinian cause, and your recent tweet about the war in Gaza led, it is understood, to the cancellation of your exhibition in a London gallery. They say it wasn't a cancellation because of the topic. What, what happened from your point of view? <laughs> I think what happened is very, in the much larger picture, is a very general condition. Um, you know, society becomes so, uh, inti uh, how do you say, uh, timid to, to really avoid any kind of questioning or, or argument. So basically, I was talking almost like uh, uh, on, on Twitter, just answering someone's question. You know, normally before never anything like this, you can talk whatever you like. You can joke, you can make fun, you can, you know, just give it, uh, your opinions. But today, I say so many people, by giving their, uh, you know, basic opinions, they get fired, they get, uh, uh, you know, censored. This has become very common. We'll talk about China in a moment, but you now live in the West. Are you worried that the West itself uh, is starting to clamp down on the freedom of expression of artists, writers, intellectuals? Yes, I have been uh, under this condition also my father's generation uh, as a writer, he was exiled. And I grew up in this uh, heavy political censorship. But uh, I realize now today in the West, you are doing exactly the same, sometimes even more ridiculous. You know, uh, if uh, I just heard uh, say uh, two uh, NYU professors, they just give some opinions. Uh, you know, it's kind of like private talk. Then they have to be fired. And uh, uh, this is a really like a cultural revolution, uh, which is really trying to destroy anybody who have a different attitude, even not even clearly opinion. So I think this is a, 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 such a pity happened in the West uh, so broadly. In, in universities, in media, in in the you know, uh, in every uh, location, universities or political sector everywhere, you cannot talk about the truth. That that is a very striking comparison to make because you you were one year old, I think, when your father, a poet, was exiled um, as part uh, part of the Cultural Revolution by Mao supporters and went to a labour camp and had to do agricultural work and clean toilets and all of that. Are you actually, are you comparing that to what is happening in the West now? I, I would say without no exaggeration, in certain point, i am come from exile and uh, from exile to exile. You know, in the West, I still cannot speak out um, because certain matters you just cannot touch. You write in your new memoir, Zodiac, that art is a special form of freedom of speech. If freedom of speech doesn't exist, we cannot call it art. And any artist who is not an artist is a dead artist. Do you think that artists in the West are speaking up enough for freedom of expression? I think it's far from enough. Artists in this society mostly are uh, corrupted by the capitalism. You know, they're just seeking for money and to also to be famous. And uh, they basically, nobody really care about uh, society or truth, or even in their art, at least they don't express their feelings. So I think that is uh, uh, a not a very good sign. That is quite a big thing. I mean, I suppose if, if I, I guess, if I were to put it this way, are you saying that artists who are selling their work for, you know, a million dollars, five million dollars, ten million dollars, are now in a way um, tempted by the money to still their voices or reduce, uh, say certain things that they ought to say? I would say 
artist made the name or make the huge profit by not connect to reality by by become some kind of decoration of a very strange uh, aesthetics. This is a uh, shameful. I think uh, artists should represent uh, human emotions and should uh, uh, you know uh, defend humanity. You um, you've really suffered. You've been imprisoned. You have been beaten, and I, you know you were. Uh, in hospital with brain injuries because of what happened to you because of your speaking out. Um, do you have any regrets that you've, in a way, taken the lead in, in that way? I never uh, regret because I'm defending a value which would profit or benefit everybody. So, you know, my little experience is not really matter. But uh, rather, I w- someone have to speak out, and the artist has res- responsibility to do that. You you don't hold back from your criticism of leaders, starting with Mr. Xi, and uh, in, in in part of your memoir, you um, your interrogator, you describe your interrogation uh, by uh, the Chinese secret police or the Communist Party officials, and your interrogator is drawn bearing the face of President Xi. I assume he didn't interrogate you himself, but what, what were you trying to say there? Well, it's just uh, symbolic, you know. I, I represent power and I represent, uh, uh, you know, his questioning, am I, am I a real artist or I'm, I'm too arrogant? So, you know, for, for this kind of story, it's always uh, has some humor and also... Uh, something symbolic. Do you think you could ever return to China and be a free citizen and practice your art as you would like to? I don't think so. I think this is a... uh, There's no question I cannot exercise my rights or my art, but I still can live well in there. And last uh, point on on China itself. when you were arrested, uh, I now think 10, 12 years ago, um, you were on your way to Taiwan. There's a lot of uh, focus now on uh, what will happen to Taiwan, new leader there and so on. What is your estimation? Will Beijing one day make a move on Taiwan? Taiwan is, uh, is something for Chinese government or in general is a part of China. Uh, of course, in Taiwanese, most of them, they wouldn't believe it because for, for over 70 years, they have nothing to do with China, but uh, it's just uh, all those argument. Taiwan basically is quite uh, uh, independent, uh, surviving, and, uh, but uh, still, this matter is not going to be uh, sorted out because Ch- China certainly believes um, China would have this unity and uh, they would do it by any means necessary. Ai Weiwei, it's been a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you for uh, talking to me. Thank you.